How's it going guys? Andrew here with Justified EDC and I've got an interesting video for you here today. The, this is not a knife review. Uh, it's not an EDC update. This is actually a tool review. Uh, these are some interesting tools I've got here from a company called Wingard Wearables, if you're not familiar with them. Uh, they've been around in the, sp in the EDC space for a while, but I'm not seeing as much content on them on YouTube. Uh, they do have their own YouTube channel and they're starting to get out into some other channels, but um, these are very interesting little tools here that I've got to take a look at. Um, this one here is the Micro Dick Pick, and this one is the Quill. Um, so the Micro Dick Pick is going to be the main focus of the video because this is the one that was sent over to me um, from Zach at Wingard Wearables. Uh, this one I've had for a little bit, uh, but I will kind of compare and contrast and go over both of them because I both think they deserve some screen time. Before we get into uh, specs and size comparisons in the review, I have to thank the sponsor of the channel, Auxiliary Manufacturing. Uh, Mike over at Auxiliary Manufacturing is doing some awesome USA-made custom fixed blades. Um, I will leave links to his Instagram and website down in the description, and thank you as always to him for sponsoring the channel. So let's get right into this here. So I will do uh, specs on both of these. Um, these are both steel. Uh, the, the product listings on the website had this as a 420 stainless uh, that are water cut uh, water jet cut blanks. Uh, this is listed as a 303 stainless, and I believe these were forged. Um, in terms of your size here, this is going to be kind of interesting to give you sizes and everything. You're looking about uh, four and three quarters overall length on this, just under five inches. This bit here, you're looking at about two and a half inches. And then on the quill, your overall length here is about three and a half terms of width, you're looking at about two inches. So you might be looking at these and wondering, Andrew, what the hell are you showing me? What are these contraptions? So uh, Wingard, Wearable, Wingard Wearables as a company has always kind of looked at things a little bit differently than the rest of the community. And that's why I, kind of, that's why I really like them. Um, I like their designs. They're always outside of the box. They're always well thought out. Their main products they do are uh, kind of like EDCable tomahawks, which is super cool. Um, I ha I do not own one of those. I would love to at some point. I have gotten to check them out in person when I've met up with Zach before. Um, they are very, very cool. Um, but he kind of started uh, making these kind of edc -able tomahawks that are uh, based on traditional designs, but kind of with modern uh, carry features that make them so that you can actually carry them and use them on a daily basis and as a modern kind of defensive weapon. Really cool concept. It's a little bit out there, but I like it. And these kind of tools are no exception to that kind of practical, but a little bit out there in terms of the design. They're, they're not just repeating what everyone else is doing. So these are kind of um, what I would say like multi-tools slash backup self-defense kind of tool. Um, the quill here is literally just a hook. There's no sheath, no anything like that. Uh, and it's designed for a couple different um, grips, I would say. So um, obviously you have two different points on here that you can use for kind of light prying and scraping and picking and digging, all that kind of stuff, kind of your practical utility uses. You can shotgun a beer with this. You can get some leverage underneath something. You can use it as a pry tool, but also you kind of have three main grips for using this as kind of like a backup self-defense tool. So you can see it kind of just sits in your hand like that. If you put it uh, in between your, uh, your middle and your index finger, you can kind of get a reverse grip on it like that. So you can kind of do your kind of reverse grip stabs. You can kind of rip downwards, kind of do um, scathing blows like that. And you can kind of rip with that hook and hit with that end. You can do kind of a punch dagger grip where you can kind of brace this against the palm of your hand and then use this if you do any kind of boxing or anything like that. You can kind of just box and have this in your hand as a force multiplier. And then you also can kind of grab it in a grip like this, kind of doing any kind of like haymaker um, punches or anything like that. So you can kind of come into the sides a little more stable in that kind of grip. Um, but that's those are the three main grips you can use that in. Similarly, the micro dick pick here, which I should mention is the smaller version uh, of the regular size dick pick. Um, which just has a longer spike, but this is the shorter version, a little more EDC friendly. Um, but uh, same kind of thing here. You can kind of go for your bracelets against your palm, have kind of your punch dagger grip, kind of your reverse grip, ice pick grip like that, 
you can kind of rake with that piece here. You can stab with that and you can stab with the spike. And then you have similarly that kind of haymaker grip right there where you can get a little bit more, you have a little bit more exposed to the spike, a little bit more stable for those kinds of impacts. But again, as uh, this does have some utility to it as well. Unlike the quill, you have a little bit more features other than just kind of poking and prying. Uh, so you do have the, the tip down here, which is a very acute tip that you can use kind of as a poker, prodder, digging tool. Uh, Zach always says on his page that spikes are super fingers. So anything that you don't want to use your fingernail for or dig around or hurt your finger with, you can kind of use a spike for. Um, similarly, over here on this edge, you have kind of a pry bar uh, thing so you can kind of you can kind of scrape with it you can get some leverage underneath something and pry up like that so uh, like with a traditional pry bar this is one from uh, Bowman Blade Works that I uh, did a kind of shitty paracord job on to get any kind of leverage on a pry bar like this you kind of have to get under it and just whatever whatever space to the table that you have is the kind of leverage that you have with this, you can get underneath something and then you have all of this to pull back on. So you have a lot more leverage to pry with. So kind of an interesting take on an EDC pry bar. And you have this surface back here that you should probably put in the sheath before doing here. But you can use this as a light kind of percussive hammer, kind of tap things into place, do some light hammering with that. So. That's kind of the the ideology behind these the, behind these two tools. Um, again, this one Zach sent me specifically to review. This one, the Quill, um, I've had for quite a while. Uh, me and my uh, father own a 3D printing company, and we actually made the trainers for the Quill when they first came out. So he sent us this one uh, to kind of design the prototype around and to kind of test to see how it uh, how it worked in practice uh, against the trainers. So. Um, if you're interested in uh, the kind of interest that I have in the company, we, we, we believe in them because we made trainers for them. We've made proto 3D printed prototypes and all that kind of stuff for their tomahawks and their knives, all that good stuff. So, um, but yeah, so I've had this one for a while. I'm going to kind of set this aside now because everything that I talk about with this applies to this as well. Um, this is just a little bit more simple. So I'm going to set that aside. Now on the dick pick, uh, the reason it has a silly name like the dick pick is because this was actually designed to kind of sit down in your waistband, um, like right behind your fly, right behind your zipper. And this kind of like picture, if your waistband is right here, kind of just sits on top of it like that. It came with some bungee cord with some like alligator clips on them um, so that you can kind of clip them to the inside of your pants or the inside of your pocket or uh, I carried it like that inside my jacket, kind of like in here, clipped to the jacket for a while. Um, but this is the reason it has the silly dick pic name <laughs> is because it's kind of sit right behind your fly with just that exposed. So it kind of tucks down right below your belt line. You can just reach in and grab it like so. Um, I chose not to use the alligator clips just because that's not really how I want to carry. I carry a gun in a spare magazine appendix, so I don't really have a whole lot of room up there for anything else inside my waistband. Um, so I actually threw this pocket clip on here. This was um, from a company that I don't think is really around anymore. Uh, Covert Products, I believe is their name. We also did some 3D printing for them back in the day, but I just had one of their uh, adjustable pocket clips laying around. So I threw that on there. And then what I just did is use this, just drop this right down in my pocket. So this was kind of just exposed right at the top of my pocket, or you can have it completely uh, discreet inside your pocket. You can just kind of reach in there. And just like an Emerson Wave or anything like that, you kind of just rotate a little bit, it catches on your pocket and that deploys. So you can either have it in there like that, and you can kind of come in here to your punch dagger grip or you can reverse it, the sheath is ambidextrous, and then you can kind of come in here to your ice pick grip, just like that. So the Kydex is molded ambidextrous. Well, I don't know if it's necessarily molded ambidextrous, but since the tool is the same shape, you can put it in either direction. So you can kind of switch around how you're carrying it. Um, these holes do fit all sorts of discrete carry concepts and ulti clips. Um, for example, I have some Discrete carry concepts clips here. So those holes do fit if you wanted to put a discrete carry concepts clip on here. Uh, some of the longer discrete carry concepts and ulti clips will mount down here so you can get a little bit higher of a carry. 
You could also alternatively throw like a static line on here and carry this inside the waistband. And like I said, it did come with those alligator like cloth grabbing clips that you can kind of use with the bungee cord and pretty much stash this wherever. You could put it on a pack, you could put it on the inside of your jacket, inside your waistband. Um, you could even clip it to the material in the bottom of your pocket. So it's kind of like a static line inside your pocket. Um, lots of lots of different options for that. So this, I just I wanted to show these off because while this is something that I don't think for me personally I would carry every day, um, they are a really interesting concept and I, I just like how Wingard Wearables has kind of a unique view of tools and the EDC world and they're thinking outside the box. They're doing things differently. Um, really some just like out of pocket designs, but they're all very functional. Everything that I've ever handled from them, from their tomahawks uh, to these kinds of tools, the spikes and the uh, the knife that's coming out. I got to handle a 3D printed prototype of it. I haven't handled the actual knife yet, but they're all a little bit funky, but they all work really well and have a lot of thought put into the designs. And that's really what I appreciate about them. So um, let me get you some size comparisons of these here. I don't really have a, a lot else to talk about uh, just because they are very simple, kind of straightforward tools. Um, but let me get you some size comparisons. So we'll do the old like knife standbys uh, comparisons and then I'll pull some other tools out since this is a tool review, not a knife review. But your old standbys here, here is the Buck 110. I'm gonna kind of put things in between them here. So these are not large tools. There's the Buck 110. Here is the old Gonzo Delica, exact same size and overall dimensions as a Spyderco Delica. Here is a Hogue Deca. Was I saying Delica or did I say Deca? I don't remember if I called this Delica or Deca. We're gonna see if I got that right in the video. That's the Hogue Deca. And here's another classic, the Kershaw Blur. Now let me pull out some tools here. So here is my, uh, I carry these every single day. These are the five inch Knipex Cobras just for good size reference. Also, in terms of thickness, you can kind of see these are very small pliers. And these are a nice slim tool. Same thing with the quill. There you go. So those are some Knipex. And yes, that is how you pronounce it. I will fight you in the comments. Here is a six foot crescent pocket tape. There you go. Uh, here's your standard Sharpie marker. Here is the Victorinox, uh, is this the, I think this is just the Tinker. I don't know, I'm terrible at the Victorinox name, but your standard Victorinox. Here is a Bic lighter, which is always a good comparison. And here is your Milwaukee Fastback. There it is closed, there it is open. This is the one with the, uh, the driver. Uh, which are excellent tools. I'm not going to do a review of these because everyone and their uncle knows about these, but like seriously, if you don't have a lot of money to spend and you need a, an EDC knife slash multi-tool, Milwaukee Fastback is the way to go. But there's another size comparison for you. So I think that should kind of do it. Oh, here, no, this is one I always have to throw in here because it's a staple on my channel, the Spyderco Para 3. And uh, that'll kind of do it for size comparisons. Let me grab you some weights on these as well, because another thing about these is that in terms of a lot of other multi-tools and stuff like that, these are very, very lightweight. So the quill is coming in at 1.6 ounces, extremely lightweight. The micro dick pick without the sheath, 1.3 ounces. And with the sheath, now this has a clip, uh, this has the, the pocket clip on it. Uh, but I mean, or the, the pocket hook, but the alligator clips will also add some weight. So dick pick with the sheath right at two ounces. So these are extremely lightweight options. Um, they're not going to take up a lot of room or weight in your carry. They're definitely something that if you're looking for something different, you're looking for something that's a little bit outside of the box. I know the EDC community can, community can get really uh, bogged down with everyone doing the exact same things. Uh, the exact same way. If you're looking for a company that's doing things differently, please go check out Wingard Wearables. Zach is an awesome guy uh, who's very thoughtful in his design process. His YouTube channel is really cool. He goes through a lot of um, like historical uh, edged and blunt weapons and how uh, they were used and then how that kind of influences his design process and some of the things that he makes. 
Um, so I will leave links to his Instagram, his YouTube, and his website down below. Please go support him. Big thank you to Zach for sending this over for me to review. I really enjoyed my time with it. Um, definitely go check out the cool as well. I think uh, the regular dick pic is in stock right now. I'm not sure about the other ones, but I'll leave a link to his website. You can go check that out for yourself. Again, big thank you to Auxiliary Manufacturing for sponsoring the channel. If you guys have any questions about these, please leave them down in the comments. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video.